education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. For every budding student eager to prepare themselves for tomorrow, we present to you Daksh 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to one and all present here. Christ University is proud to welcome you all to this edition of Daksh, the annual flagship event of the university. My name is Anshika Mishra, and I will be your MC for the day. Daksh, the annual education and career guidance fair hosted by the Student Council of Christ, deemed to be university, is a one-stop destination for all things education. At Daksh, you get to witness exclusive opportunities, imperative student guidance, acquire varied knowledge, and make informed choices regarding your education and your careers. Without any further ado, I present to you today's session, an insight into law and advocacy as a career. We are beyond honored to have our mid-stars, Mr. Pavan Rile, our esteemed speaker for today. Mr. Rile is an alumnus from our very own School of Law, holding a BALLB Honors degree and graduating in the year 2015 as a student of excellence. Currently, Mr. Rile is an advocate at the Supreme Court of India, having his independent practice in Delhi. He handles a wide range of cases dealing with various issues, including civil, criminal, anti-competition, environmental, complex contractual matters, and constitutional matters. Sir is also the co-founder of Neve Judicial Education in Delhi. He has been presented with two awards in association with the Supreme Court, namely the Maharshi Vatmiki Samiti Award for the outstanding work done saving the environment and the Vatmiki Jagriti Mission Award for the outstanding work done for the welfare of manual scavengers. Sir, it is an absolute privilege to have you here at Daksh and I request you to kindly take the dais. Hello. Is uh, my voice in audible to everyone? It's great. So let me open my speech. I don't speak extempo because this is not something for what I have come long way from long way Delhi to Bangalore. So I'm prepared a little bit. Okay. Uh, So thank you so much, first of all, for giving such a wonderful introduction. I don't know whether I deserve this or not, but it's so honored, I'm so honored and privileged, it's so honor for me to, you know, to speak in uh, such a prestigious institution, to speak all in front of you all. Uh, today, I have come to know, I realized, I just discussed this thing in the last session also. I had one session uh, from 9.30 to 10.15 uh, for fourth years. And I just discussed these things with them also. That today, I believe that I have done something in my life. Something. And there are various reasons for that. There are three incidents which occurred just yesterday night, which have made me believe that I have done something in life. First was that inside Christ University, I was giving entry after 10 o'clock at night. Second reason is, legally, I got the chance to you know, go by that lift inside the auditorium which is made for guests, legally. Second is that I got late on 10th floor Skyview Auditorium, no one cut my attendance. So these are the reasons which made me believe that I have done something in my life. Uh, now when we talk about 
litigation prospects or we talk about this law and advocacy as a career, let me tell you that there are various questions what we ask to ourselves. There are various myths, there are various questions what we ask. The first question which people ask that, sir, how to set up the independent practice. The second question we always ask that there are so many people who are being passed out from the law colleges and they are going to work for su in Supreme Court, High Court, so how to get success at that? The third question we ask that which field we should go, whether we should go for a corporate law, whether we should go for arbitration, whether we should go for all these civil side, criminal side and so on. So these are the basic questions what we always have in our mind when we talk about litigation as a career or law and advocacy or law as a career in future. So if in Supreme Court, let me assure you this, in Supreme Court and High Court and District Court, if there are thousands and thousands of successful lawyers, there are thousands and thousands of successful stories they have in their life. So today, I will tell you mine, a little bit of story I will tell you about me, and after that we will move to some important aspect. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm Pawan Rele. I'm alumni of this prestigious institution I passed out in 2015. I belong to a small town called District Panna, Madhya Pradesh. It's a very, it's a very small town, confining to five kilometers. So, I passed out from Hindi medium school, completely Hindi medium school. My school fee was 200 rupees when I passed out. After that, when I passed out, I came to Bhopal for the preparation of common law admission test, like everyone does. You know, they go to carry launcher, just come bolte hain, what we say, ke hum touch karne ke liye, everyone goes to carry launcher for the preparation of CLAT for any prestigious institution. I also went to prepare for uh, common law admission test in, carry, in this carry launcher LST Bhopal and I found that was the first big city I have ever visited. I found that city as a New York, Washington, Las Vegas. I said, what is this? Bhopal, so many people having interaction in English in carry launcher. 300 people in one class. It was so big thing for me. Now immediately, that day there was one faculty who was teaching me that this Caesars is called the plural number. Trousers are plural number. You may be knowing about the basic grammar, right? That trousers are the plural number, Caesars are the plural, num plural number. I got confused with that and I asked her that I'm not able to understand how is it possible that Caesars can be plural number and it's not a singular number. So there was a g one girl, now she is my very good friend, she was standing outside of the corner of that, uh, that, that coaching institution. I went to her with a fond hope that I would get good reply. I asked her that, excuse me, uh, which book should I read for English? I asked in Hindi, Ki ke liye kaun si kitab which book should I read for English? She said, excuse me. So it was very bad for me. I was just discussing this in the last session also. I was a very crying baby. I always used to cry and that is always good. You should, everyone should cry if they are feeling crying. If they feel like crying, everyone should cry. So I used to cry a lot. I went to my hostel and I said, like, it's very bad, bad thing has happened with me. So, since my English was not good, I wrote one thing in my piece of, in one piece of paper and wrote top four clad. Wrong proposition, it's top and clad. I wrote top four clad. Now what happened for the national law schools and so on, uh, that's a long story, I'm not going to divulge into that, I'm not going to go into that. So I wrote top four clad. So there was one student in my hostel where I was in Bhopal, so he said, he thought that my English is too good. So he said, okay, let's interact in English. I said, okay, fine, that's great, let's have interaction. So he kept speaking to me for three to four days and after that he kept stopped. He said, okay, it's okay, fine. I said, what happened? He said, no, no, you are not able to understand and I'm not able to understand, I'm not going to harass you, I'm not going to embarrass you. I said, fine, no problem. Again, I went to my hostel and tried again. After that, when I came back to my hostel, I told him that you are going for summer vacations in June to your home, you come back. Meanwhile, I crammed the entire dictionary, it started from J, K, L, M, N, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, and so on. After that, I used to, you know, put, use any word anywhere because crammering the dictionary actually does not help you. So I, I learned uh, this world power made easy, 
Okay, after that, I learned this Tata McGraw, then Ren and Martin. What you study in your fifth class, sixth class, seventh class, and eighth class? I studied when I was preparing for CLAT. So I used to study for 14 to 15 hours in a day. I'm not exaggerating it. That was the, actually because I had to improve my language. And this is the privilege which you already have. And you already had. So I had to spend at least 14 to 50 hours in a study. So when I started studying this, after that, when he came back, I, for one synonym, he told me the synonym of intelligent. I gave him around 27 synonyms of the word intelligent. Man of Marx, man of letters, and so on, Lamban, Paul Hister, and so on. I told him all the synonyms. And he was just amazed by that. Anyway, that does not solve the problem. After that, I came to Christ University. Because my father was a teacher, why I'm telling you all these stories? Because I believe that if I can do, then you can also do. You can also succeed in litigation. You may have heard the story that litigation, uh, you know, it's so much of hard work requires, so much of patience required, family uh, uh, requires, your godfather requires. But that's why I'm telling you my story. So after hearing this story, after listening to this story, I believe if I can do, then you can also do that. So when I came to uh, Bangalore, I was sitting in one room, and you know the Christ University actually, it gave me around. Uh, to, I think it gave me around. I came to know because my computer skills were very bad. I could not check my result and so on. There were so many things, so many problems. So I came to know just two days before that I had been selected for Christ University Bangalore, and I just needed to go. That is it. So I had no money that time. My parents said that they don't have money. They have to arrange. They cannot arrange it within you know within in the span of one day or two day, 24 hour or 48 hour. I said, okay, no problem. Now what to do? I was very, very frustrated that time. Then one of my friends came. He said that he has his engineering fees. He paid one lakh rupees for me. I came from uh, Bhopal to Bangalore. It was the first time that I came by flight. The fare was very ex excessive. It was 16,800 rupees. First time I could not have imagined that I would have come by flight. I came by flight to Bangalore, got admission there. My parents did not come here. They only came when the degree was being handed over to me. So when I came to Christ, Again, there was, since my reading skill got improved, but he's speaking, there was so much of problem in his speaking English. Now what happened, there was one of my friend who was there in this college, and you know, when you, when you are in first year, when you come to college, you may be finding, you think that everyone is so intelligent except you. When you are entering in the first year, you shower all your knowledge of defamation, civil suit, taught everything, what you have learned in your carry launcher class. People, you know, have this big, big books of uh, Williams or Avatar Singh Contract Act and so many things. So that happened in first year. So I was also mesmerized. I was so speechless. Then people were having interaction. They were standing in circle. They were having interactions. So I, I dared to go inside that circle and said that uh, that uh, I started speaking in English there also. So there was one person who passed out. Now he's my very good friend. He has set up his law firm, but he takes advice now for all the legal matters from my office itself. So he told me that time, in 2010, that you don't speak in English, we are not able to understand, in front of all the ladies and gentlemen who were standing there. Again, I felt very bad. And I told him, but this time I had got the power to give fit reply. So I told him that my dear friend, from which school you have passed out? He said, from R.K. Puram DPS. I said, maybe your fee, maybe at least, will be one lakh rupees in a year. He said, yes. So I said, one lakh into 12, it means 12 lakh rupees. I studied from Hindi medium school, 200 rupees for one month. 12 month, 2400, 600 admission, 3000. It's a 4000 rupees. Or 3000 rupees into 12, 36,000. So after wasting 12 lakh rupees, you are in the same college, same class, where I'm after only wasting 36,000 rupees. So that day he came to know that day he came to know that there was some chingari inside me. You know, chingari, there was some fire inside me. He said, "Okay, fine." And then we all became very good friends. Then one of my senior, he came to me and told me that, "Pawan, do one thing. You join any moot court team, but no one will take you as a speaker. So you be researcher." I said, "No, I want to be speaker." He said, "No one will take you." I said, "Don't worry, I will form my own team." In Hindi, it's called Anno Mein Raja. I form my own team like similar situated people, okay? I formed my own team. I determined to be speaker. In second year, in second year, I got 39th rank. 
In third year, I was a speaker. In third, in third year, I got around 37th rank, just two rank better than earlier. The reason was because one of my teammates just spoiled something in speaking. In fourth year, in national moot court competition in all the teams, I got second rank. In international moot court competition also, I got second rank. I got best advocate, gentlemen, best speakers. I won some moot court competitions also. We also participated in Jessup and we got first rank and we represented our college in Jessup also as a speaker. Now you may be wondering that why I could not get the first rank in national or international because the moot court convener also, uh, this convener also participated in that. <laughs> and he, they did not participate in the... Uh, it's all anyways for fun. <laughs> Don't take it too, too seriously. But yeah, I have this feeling in your mind and heart. So, so in, we represented all these moot court competitions uh, outside. We won. We won best advocate gentleman. We were best speaker. I used to get very good marks, even com better marks than most of the people who were having amazing skills of English. Why? Because I mastered a little bit of law. Suppose if in one moot court competition, if the judge used to ask me that under what writ we are going to strike down the statute, you just need to tell me this. So the people who were fluent in English, they were not ready to answer. They were not, they were not having any answer for that. So he said, does anyone know here? I said, yes, mandamus. He said, okay, full marks, 91 marks out of 100. And the second speaker, 80 marks. So that differentiates. Now, I started writing articles. I published around 15 articles when I was in college, national and international articles. I had 15 publications. I determined to write book also. I started making my dissertation when I was in fourth year itself on the National Judicial Appointment Commission. There is a deep history for that also. There was one moot court competition conducted by Oxford University. Uh, in fourth year, so we prepared very, 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 very hard for this. But actually, you search that in the Google, that one Oxford moot court competition was a scam in Delhi. So I prepared it, we prepared it for six months, but it was actually a scam. So I again went to the roof, as I told you, I was very crying, baby, I started crying. What is this? It was a scam, we prepared so hard. And for that, I researched on the National Judicial Appointment Commission. The moot proposition was in relation to National Judicial Appointment Commission. So I did not break that time. I utilized that opportunity. I made that as a dissertation because the moot memorial was very big. And that dissertation I converted into a book which was honored by Dr. Manmohan Singh in later stage. So you don't have to break yourself in one particular time. You need to utilize the opportunities. You need to explore the things where you can use, utilize your hard work in coming time. Then when I passed out from college, I, uh, in fourth year, uh, Sharmila ma'am helped me a lot when I was in first year, second year. Uh, she helped me how to improve in English, what to read, what not to read. So I got one opportunity to intern in Nishit Desai and Associates uh, in fourth year. I also worked there for one month. So as an internee, in fourth year, when I was going to get internship, they did not call me for oral viva for something, so I wrote to their managing partner that time. But so they promised me to give me internship in next semester. So I met Pukrat sir. Pukrat sir fixed me, fixed my internship in third year. He fixed my internship with additional advocate general, government of Haryana, Mr. Vinod Sharma, who gave me job in the later stage. And today he is my partner with 50% share in law firm. So I went to meet him. I interned under him for one month. He used to ask me many questions in relation to the relation between Article 13 and 368. So your constitution should be very strong when you are going to work in Supreme Court and High Court. So I had that, I had that passion for learning the constitution. I started reading MP Jain and Sirvai from my first year and second year itself. I first learned Glenville Williams learning the law, then I started from VN Shukla, then MP Jain, then Sirvai, then DN DD Basu and so on. So I started learning constitutional from the first year itself. I also got the opportunity to teach my own classmates when I was in third year. So there was some constitutional faculty, he went missing. He went actually to some other college due to some reason. So I got the opportunity to present some constitutional topic to my own classmates. And you know, when you deliver your speech to your own classmates, what is the result? Hooting, you know? They don't listen, they say, okay, okay, fine. But anyway, we delivered. Now, when I, we passed out, when I passed out of the college, I met the harsh realities of the profession. Harsh realities of the profession. And now, harsh realities of the profession, there are 
many proverbs which is very famous and known for the lawyers famous or infamous i told you that and then i will come to the main topics let me begin with the famous or infamous quotes about lawyers lord bogum definition of lawyer he said lawyer is a learned gentleman who recuses your state from your enemies and keeps it to himself chinese there is a chinese proverb which says going to law is like losing a cow for the sake of a cat i am talking about the infamous proverb for the lawyers the butcher uh, okay the butcher in second henry 6 said the first thing we do let's kill all the lawyers but in spite of this concerted attack of centuries the tribe of a lawyer continues to uh, uh, flourish prosper and for flourish and that is why we wear the black gown so that all the criticism just comes and we absorb that there are so many so many good points we are always there to serve the society as a lawyer but in order to succeed as a lawyer there are few skills what we require and those skills not only start when you pass out from your college but they start when even you are inside the college now i am going to divide this in two part when you are inside the college what you require to do and when you pass out side of the college when you pass out of the college what you require to do so when you are inside the college there are some common myth which always you know circulates when you are first year second year and third year so i am going to counter those myths one by one uh the first myth is in law school the first myth is and then i'll carry on with my story the first myth is we always think that nlus are better most of the nlus we think that they are better but let me tell you this is just a presumption the same mentality i had got in life this is just a presumption and the presumption is that so many students law students from nlsiu or nalsar or nlu nuals when they come to our office for internship there is a presumption the presumption is that they are intelligent the presumption is that the that that the the students from these colleges are not intelligent the students from these colleges are intelligent so you have to prove you have to rebut that presumption that you are intelligent and they have to rebute they have to counter that presumption that they are not intelligent so it's just a matter of presumption it does not matter after some point of time second myth is is internship in big places internship in big places so when you are in first year when i when i was in college i used to hear i used to ask my colleagues where did you intern they used to tell me i interned under attorney general i interned under solicitor i interned under advocate general now let me ask you whether on the basis of your merits itself are you going to get internship under solicitor general or attorney general of india it's not possible so when you are coming to me for the job definitely i would believe i will believe that this is not on the basis of merit and i'll start grilling you in your interview how did you get this internship and then we make so many mistakes in the cv that we learned drafting under kk venugopal sir you is learned drafting under ramjit malani sir you learned drafting under sori surabji sir it is not possible because the senior advocate do not get any drafting they don't have any drafting in their office senior advocate just get brief to represent the matter so basic mistake so internship in big places if you have jugaad if you have recommendations they are like a brahmastra suppose if i know supreme court judge and some traffic police in bangalore has caught me and he is saying sir pay the penalty of not wearing mask of 300 rupees i will say okay let me call supreme court judge whether that will be the right decision that will not be right decision so what is the right decision that let me pay the fine in that time because i am saving my jugaad i am saving my recommendations for one particular time because those are those are like the brahmastra which i can use them in the right time so use your jugaad your brahmastra your recommendation in the right time when you really really require it okay so you if you have your family connections if you have those things use in the right time so do not do big internship in the first year second year itself you go one by one ngo district court lawyer and then 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 you can you can explore all the areas you can go for corporate uh, law firms also you can go for some constitutional practice also service matters also and so on now the uh third myth what we always have and that is the biggest disease which i believe that law school study does not matter so many senior will come to you and say oh does not they will not say that in the stage but indirectly they will tell you that law school study does not matter it's wrong law school study matters a lot now let me tell you uh, i learned one definition under contract one one section under contract act and i read it really in a nice way 
uh, section four, when communication of proposal completes and when communication of acceptance complete, when you, you may have read the contract act, right? So Justice Sanjeev Khanna, when he was high court judge, now he's currently Supreme Court judge, he was sitting, so it was my first year, 2015 itself, I just went to uh, attend one matter. I had one service matter, I was representing my sir in 2016. Then he said, he, so there was one junior counsel, we are always, you know, in favor of bombarding judges with the case laws. Sir, in that judgment, this happened. In case on the Bharati, para number 22. In this judgment, this happened. He said, no, I don't want all that. Just tell me the statutory provision. Judgments are there, just there to support you. For that statutory provision. Then he said, no, sir, I don't know the statutory provision. Now, what was the point? The point was that he served one notice to the government. And the question was that when the communication of that representation has completed. So Justice Sanjeev Ghanna asked him, because he's a very academical judge. He focused on academics. He said, no, you need to tell me the provision. He said, no, I don't know. Since I had read long back, he said, is there any junior lawyer who knows this definition? I said, sir. He said, what is that? I said, the communication of proposal complete when it is put into the uh, box, so it goes out of the power of the person to whom it is made and so on. He got impressed. He said, what's your item? I said, sir, item number 47. He said, you argue first. I argued the matter and he gave decision in my favor. He just issued the notice. So that is the impression sometime you get in court because of your academics. If your academics are strong, if your law school study is strong, that matters a lot. How I managed when I was in college, I used to sit in library. Every day I used to sit in library from 5 to 9, 5 to 9, 5 to 9. Every single day I used to sit in library. And that is very much required. Now the fourth method, fourth myth is that mood court does not matter. Mood court matters a lot. In framing the advocacy, definitely, Courtroom, you need to read the mind of the judge, which you don't have to read the mind of the judge when you are in moot court generally. So this is the difference, but moot court matters a lot. It will teach you the research skill, it will teach you many, many other skills, oral, uh, oratory skills and so on. So moot matters a lot, so do not be under this myth. Uh, next is, know the rules of Legal Education, Bar Council Rules on Legal Education 2008. When you are going for internship, you need to know about all these rules. I have asked many students what dress you are required to wear when you are in internship. They said, sir, any shirt, any pant, any formals. No, there are rules. And when you are ignorance of law is not an excuse. When you are going for internship, you need to know about that. Now, which field has a scope? Basically, this question which is asked by many students. So every field has a scope. Now, according to me, traditional practices have more scope. Because all the cream, all the good students, they are running for corporate. And the basic law, the family matters, the criminal law, the civil suit, they want you. The client there want you, some good advocates to represent them. Every good students are going for corporate, every good student is going for competition law, every good student is with the fond hope that they will earn money somewhere, someday. Money is there in every field, money is there in all streams. Family law, some, I have seen many advocates charging criminal law, 5, 5 lakhs, 6 lakhs, 6, 6 lakhs, 10, 10 lakh rupees for per hearing. So every, every field has money, every field has a scope. There's a famous proverb that does not matter that you be the cobbler in the world, but make sure you be the best cobbler in the world. Same thing applies in law. It does not matter that the profession is overcrowded or not. Need to develop, the next point is, I want to tell you that you need to develop your interpretations. That is very, very, very crucial point. You need to develop your interpretation. Why I'm telling you this? Because your mind currently is like a child mind. You don't have many responsibilities. You may be feeling responsibilities of making research paper, you may be criticizing the college, oh, all time we keep making research papers, all time assignments, all time semesters and so on. But let me also tell you this, that you are free today. You are free after four. You need to develop your interpretation. How will you develop your interpretation? You need to read the judgments. You need to take out small, small judgments of, start from three to four, four to five pages judgment and you start reading them. Don't take out the Keshwananda Bharti. Don't take out the Keshwan and the Bharti, otherwise that will be the first and last case for you people. What you will read, okay? So do not take out that. Need to take out the small, small judgments and you need to carry on from there. So read one judgment two to three times, four times, five times. Improve your analytical skills and interpretations. That why judge had said so, how he had said so, what is the jurisprudence behind it, whether judge has got any power to do that or not. You need to introspect. What Supreme Court has said is not always correct. You may be being taught that Supreme Court, what Supreme Court says is correct for today, obviously, but it's not necessary that jurisprudentially that will be true. I will give you an example. Uh, there was a very famous judge in 1950 case. I will not bore you. There was a very famous case, AK Gopalan judgment. 
so just in ek gopalan case there was one dissenting opinion okay now in that dissenting opinion there were two points what one judge has given that whether one fundamental right when you are coming for uh, constitution in third year you will come to know about it there were two questions one was that whether fundamental right has to be read in a watertight compartment or not and the second question is was that whether article 21 includes uh, the whether the procedure under article 21 should be fair just and reasonable now one judge gave two dissenting opinion and all the five judges were in one side now one dissenting opinion now the people who were there in 1952 they said okay so what supreme court has said was absolutely right but one law that article has to be cannot be read in a watertight compartment was overruled in rc cooper case and another reasoning that procedure and law must be fair just and reasonable was overruled in 1976 in menka gandhi case so the jo judgments were overruled after some time so you need to question even the judgments of the court that whether jurisprudentially they are right or wrong so you need to develop this interpretation in the law school itself why i'm telling you because once you are in outside of the law school you will not get these this time to develop your interpretational skills you will be busy with your own cases and you will try to do maximum work in less time so you will not get time to develop your interpretation skills so you need to develop that now uh now i'm coming for the court craftsmanship which is the advocacy for courts as i was telling you so now when you come to court after passing out of the law school you have many responsibilities you have many many responsibilities your one responsibility is towards the court second responsibility is towards your client third responsibility is towards the opposite counsel and fourth responsibility is towards the profession so let me tell you about the first responsibility what you have towards the court so when you are passing out you may many of you may be thinking that uh, sir we have time 2 to 3 years but you need to learn these advocacy skills right now you don't have time time will pass like this in the pinch of finger and you will never be able to wait so first responsibility is towards the court and the first responsibility is that you know need to read the mind of the judge you need to know the judge and in law there is a very famous book written by justice hidayatullah uh, forwarded by justice hidayatullah uh, the art of a lawyer it's a very one it's a wonderful book you must all read it now it was it is stated in that book that when one man is not behaving properly he is not he is called madman right in the similar way when one advocate is not behaving properly so this advocacy turns into madvocacy so he has given this four principles of advocacy the first one i'm going to tell you this is that you need to know the judge now how you know the judge you know the judge when you go to the court again and again and again and that is why it is called practice you are practicing the mind of the judge each and every day suppose there are so many faculties in law schools if they are for one and two cases they are going to represent anyone in the court it's not called practice because what is practice which you do it every day on a regular basis right so as i told you you need to need to read the mind of the judge i will give you one very simple example what is that how to read the mind of the judge and why it is required so it's my own matter one of my matter in one electricity court in karkaduma court delhi district court there was one judge who was dealing with the electricity matters okay so before me there was one counsel he was not knowing the judge and he just went inside the court and he started arguing the matter your lordship the honorable supreme court in that judgment said this 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 honorable high court of delhi has also laid down this law now the privy council now the high court of kochi now the high court of karnataka he was not interested in listening all that because the judge was majorly focusing on the facts of the case and something else that now there are various kinds of judges there are some judges who want the law to be given to them like justice rohingya nariman like justice yp chandrachur there are some judges who do not want the law they want facts like justice datur he was there in supreme court he want exact list of dates he says we know the law you give the facts there are some judges who want the legal analysis from your side there are some judges who want they do not care about law generally they want the moral duties towards the client and they think that if the client has come personally to the court there may be some problems so in that matter what happened that advocate argued vehemently vehemently i thought he is going to get the decision but since i used to 
appear in that court, I was knowing the mind of the judge. He started arguing the matter and said that, my lord, I, my client had got 10 lakh rupees electricity bill. It should be reduced to 2 lakh rupees and these are the law, this is the power of the court. Court said, no, sorry, dismissed. After that, there was one local advocate of that court. He brought some slippers. He took that out from one bag. He gave one of a client who was very old, around 75 year old, he got that lady, gave that slipper, took, down, uh, took out that slipper and made her wear that. That lady, she wore like this and she went inside the court like this. Okay, when she went, when she went inside the court, she said, Janab, I'm so old. She said in Hindi, Main bahut budi hoon, Janab. No one is there in my family to feed my child. They have all run away. They have done this, they have done that. Then judge says, the advocate was quiet. Then the judge said, Mataji, what do you want? She said, Janab, a bijli company wale, they have you know, got me some six lakh rupees bill. Then he said, Mataji, then what do you want? Janab, it can be divided in 20 installments and it can be reduced to two lakh. Theek hai, Mataji, done, okay, done. And then he gave the relief. That advocate did not argue the matter, but he got the relief and that is called the art of advocacy. You don't have to argue, and that's called argument without having any arguments. That is the art of advocacy. You need to argue the matter without even arguing the matter. Understood? There was one more incident I would like to tell you, which is given in the book, I told you the art of a lawyer. Uh, and there was one interview given by Justice B.N. Banerjee, who was the Chief Justice of Calcutta High Court. He said that's a long, it's an it's a old story. So there was uh, one, one advocate, so there was one judge in one court, and his behavior was that he never wanted to interject any counsel, and he never wanted to show any, he never wanted to show any disapproval when he's dismissing any matter. So what he used to do, it was his habit, you know, when they are, when they have been judging since last uh, 10 years to uh, 15 years, they, they had some, they have some habits. So his habit was then when he was going to dismiss the matter, he used to say, hmm, 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 yes, yes, or hmm, hmm, no, no. So he said, hmm, and he used to do like this in the table, okay? Thumb the table like this. So his clerk, he used to come to know that, okay, this is a dismissal sign. So he used to write in the order, item number 35, dismissed. So one junior advocate, he went to that judge, and he started arguing the matter, and the judge said, with a with a full smile. <laughs> he said, okay, I'm going to get this order. I'm going to get the favorable order. Very well, very well, counsel, very well. <laughs> and then when he went out, he, it's, a long, it's a very old story. So when he came out, his face, he was so jubilant. In excitement, he called the chaprasi, the pun of that court staff, and gave charana to him, four anas to him. He said, okay, you enjoy your life. The, the chaprasi was knowing that his matter has been dismissed, but he did not tell them. Next day, when he came to know about the order that his matter has been dismissed, he came back to the judge and said, what was that? Then he confronted the judge. He said, your honor, what was that? You uh, gave me all the sign of, <laughs> I thought that you are going to pass judgment in my favor, but you gave against it. So he said, okay, but this is uh, not, he said, I never said so, that I'm going to give any decision in your favor. So he said, what is this? I gave charana to your chaprasi. So, so he said, okay, have you? Take it back. <laughs> so he dismissed the case. Why I'm telling you this? Because litigation, practicing the law, is not only about knowing the law, that you have crammed the entire DD bus to HMCY, so you are going to get success in litigation. And that is the difference between a good teacher and an advocate. You need to know the reality of the courts, which are very harsh. Now, so as I told you, you need to know the mind of the judge. The duty towards the court is that you always need to present in the court. When you are in the court, even if when you are interning, you need to be present in the court. When you are a junior, you need to present in the court. Absence from the court, your senior advocate can afford it. But being a junior lawyer, you cannot afford. You cannot say uh, uh, that I was somewhere else, my lord, I was in some other courtroom. You cannot afford to have that. Your senior advocate can do that, okay? So always be present in the court. Uh, always be well prepared, like I am today. I told you that I'm not going to speak ex tempo. I had some points, everything is, other thing is there in my mind, but I had the points. Because this is another art of advocacy. 
Lawyer cannot speak extempore in the court. He has to be well prepared. You cannot tell the judge. Let me tell you that your five to seven years is, are your defining period. You define yourself. You define yourself in the court. That, okay, this is the advocate. This is the integrity. This is the honesty of that person. He is very curious. He is very knowledgeable. He shares his knowledge and so on. So you need to be very, very well prepared with your case. Judges asking you, what is the impugn order? I have seen many juniors. Uh, impugn order, I don't know. File, I don't have. That gives very bad impression. So you always, you should always be very, very well prepared with your case. Uh, give correct facts to the court. Never suppress any facts and don't give any wrong facts to the court. So these are the primary duty. You, you have got the primary duties, you know, towards the court. Secondary duty is towards the client that you always need to give correct advice to your client. Okay, there are so many questions what people ask me when they come for internship from law schools and from non-law uh, non schools. They ask me, sir, uh, then you always say that you always need to give correct advice to the client, then how to manage the client? I say that you need to give correct advice, it means when there is no remedy in the law. When there is no remedy in the law. For example, recovery suit. When you're going to file, someone has taken your 3 lakh rupees and your client wants you to file a recovery suit, the limitation period is 3 years. Even if there is a 1 month delay, court is not going to entertain that suit. So you read the law and you give correct advice to your client that, see, my dear friend, this case is not maintainable before the court, right? But if you want, we can take one step. So you need to inform, it is your duty to inform him, to give him correct advice. Now, the third duty you have for your opponent counsel. What is that third duty towards the opponent counsel? That you always need to inform him. Suppose you are going to mention any matter in the court. When you are practicing before the court, you mention matters before the court, okay, at 10.30. Always need to inform your client. Don't send a reply at, I have seen uh, some of my opponent, they send me reply at 12 o'clock night. So that I should take the date today that my lord, my opponent counsel has sent me reply at 12 o'clock, I need some time to read the matter. That is not ethical. That is not right according to me. You always need to give reply according to the time as per the time. So you need to be ethical with your opponent. Okay. Uh, towards your opponent counsel now, there is one duty also towards the client of the opponent. I would like to tell you, there was one very famous cross-examination of England. Very, very famous cross-examination. So the advocate who was, I will tell you how the cross-examination was conducted then. That advocate was cross-examination, the wife of a burglar, okay? And then he asked that how, uh, how do you know this man? Is he your husband? So the wife says, yes. Sometime even the witnesses, they, they are very witty, they give you fit reply and after that everything is over. Okay. So he said, how do you know this man? Is your husband? She said, yes, he is my husband. He said, okay. Then he asked that, uh, from, uh, did you know that he was a burglar when you uh, got married to him? He wanted to, you know, take out few things. He said, yes, she said, yes, I was knowing that he was a burglar. Then he said, then why did you marry him when you were knowing that he was a burglar? That question was not required actually, and that is called the art of cross-examination. Then she replied that, sir, I was getting old. As a lady, I was getting old. Then I was having only two options, either to marry a burglar or a lawyer. So I married a burglar. Cross-examination ended there. So sometimes even the witnesses are so witty in court that you don't have any reply to say. And that was recorded in the court in one of the famous cross-examination. So you have one duty also towards the opponent that suppose if there's a poxo matter, rape matter, you need to respect the, uh, the worthiness of uh, the opposite client also. Now, uh, I'm coming back to my struggle now where I stopped. So these are some rules of advocacy. Now some of the rules of advocacy I would like to tell you about from my story. Do we have time? Five minutes? We have five minutes? Okay, I'll finish it in five minutes. So when I, as I told you, uh, now what happened when I passed out from the college, some of the rules I'm going to give you from my story itself. So when I passed out, I started working under Additional Advocate General Haryana. I used to give only 10,000 rupees as a salary. I was already having very less expectations. So in that time, I had written a book. I had 15 articles publication, best advocate, gentleman, best speaker, so many mood code competition in my CV. And I told sir, that sir, it is, it is not possible. I also want to work in district courts. Then he said, okay, fine, you go and work in district court, but I'm not going to recommend anyone. I said, fine, I will find myself. 
So I went to Tis Hazari court. There's a Tis Hazari court in Delhi. I went there, and there was one sir and there was one advocate under whom I interned long back in third year. I used to draft small, small writ petitions in third year. So I, I thought that he may be impressed by my skills. He will give me job. But he denied. He said, no, no, Pavan, sorry, I have engaged someone else. So I have, uh, we have hired someone else. I said, sir, no problem. I went to the chamber, which is beside his chamber, and I told him, sir, I want to, I called him. Actually, there are numbers which are hanging in the nameplates, you know. So I called him and I said, sir, I want to apply as a junior chamber. Then he said, who recommended you? I said, no one. And he said, sorry, he kept his call. He kept his phone. Then I went to the fourth chamber. I called, sir, I want to apply as a junior chamber. He said, who recommended you? I said, the second one who rejected me. I said, he recommended me for your chamber. Then he said, no, no, there are no vacancies. Then I kept calling around 35 to 40 people. It was, it was July, a very, very hard time in Delhi. So in July, I, I called around 35 to 40 people there in different, different chambers. Then one senior met me and he said, that, OK, you talk to my son. His son was also practicing advocate, and that senior advocate had left the practice. I said, fine. So I was in the district court. He called me that come uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I went uh, to Tisazari court at 10 o'clock. He did not come. Again, day after tomorrow, I went. He did not come. Day to day after tomorrow, he did not come. I continuously waited from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. No one came. Then in the next day, he came, and he said, OK, Pavan, uh, it's OK. You can join. I was expecting 5,000 rupees only. I was expecting that was su su sufficient. You know, when you are a student, you get 10,000. If from somewhere you are getting two to 3,000, it's so much for you, right? It happens. Additional money you have got. And you come to, you, you think where to spend, which restaurant to be eaten, you know, where to eat the food. So I was like this. I was expecting only 5,000 rupees. So I went to him. I shown him CV, sir. This is my CV. He said, okay, it's okay. I will give you 10,000 rupees only. I said, what, 10,000? It's too much for me. I said, OK, OK, fine, fine, fine. I'm not going to negotiate. He said, oh, are you OK? I said, OK. So I was having very, very less expectation. And this is one of the major problem with today's generation, that we have very, so, so many expectations in practicing when we practice the law. That we are going to get 1 lakh rupees, 50,000 rupees. Then we post something in the LinkedIn. The advocates are being exploited. The juniors are being exploited, and so on. You do that, there is no problem. But always have less expectations in the profession. So that time, I used to earn 10,000 rupees from district court, 9 to 6, 7.30 to 9 o'clock. I used to work. There was a classes, personality development class. I used to teach personality development there. Today, I have converted that into a judicial service examination class called Neve Judicial Education. So currently, I'm teaching around 950 students there for judicial service preparation. Pro bono, you can also join if you want to prepare for judicial service examination. So I'm partner now in that coaching institution. From there, I was earning only 5,000 rupees. So 10,000, 5,000, 15,000. And then I used to work 10, 30 to 2 o'clock for Supreme Court. So 25,000 rupees in total. 10,000 from Supreme Court, 10,000 from District Court, and 5,000 from Personality Development Class. So that was the struggle. What I want to just share with you is this, that you all always need to focus on your determination. You always need to focus on the right path. You always need to have a good guidance, find out the right faculties, find out the right seniors, not all the seniors. Okay? Find out the right seniors who can give you correct advice. Academic study matters. Start sitting in library. And let me tell you this in the last, that you are unstoppable. If I can do, then you can also do. Thank you so much. Any questions? With that, we have come to an end of today's event. I request our student council coordinator, Dr. Pukhraj Agarwal, to present our guest of honor with a memento as a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yes, okay. We thank our speaker immensely for enlightening the part to broaden our knowledge. Thank you to all the faculty members, members of the management, and volunteers for being the backbone behind the run of this smooth event. Thank you all for being a wonderful audience. 
We hope each one of you present here takes home a new slice of learning for your future endeavors and that you are one step closer to understanding your paths better. Have a lovely day.